All right, so we got a little dent here in the bug here. Um, and we're going to go kind of walk you guys through what I'm going to do here, and then I'm going to let you guys bring you guys along. Let's take a look and see uh, how you tackle a little repair like this if you guys have never done it. And I'm uh, going gonna to go start to finish. Uh, I'm going to kind of give you guys a real quick heads up on how, you know, what my plan is here. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, get some hammer dollies, uh, pull this dent out. If you can see, it's a pretty good sized dent in there. Um, and then, um, you know, there's a couple different uh, approaches you can make. You know, I could take off the headlight, take off the bumper, take off the grill, take out the fender beating, take out the take off the light, uh, take off the uh, rock guards. You know, and tape maybe even the running board and tape everything off or take the fender off. <laughs> okay and uh, spot repair this and blend it and then go ahead and clear the whole fender or uh, you can forego doing all that and I'm going to do something called uh, spot painting and clean, uh, blending clear coat um, and a lot of guys will tell you that uh, you can't do that successfully um, you'll end up with a ring around the repair uh, because what happens where you blended it from the old uh, finish to the new um, that you're that it's not going to melt in properly um, and that is true uh, if you're using like a factory if, you're, if it's a factory finish like if it was uh, you know if this was a factory finish and it was uh, put into a uh, uh, baking room and you know and all the stuff that they do when they build a car you know because they, they can get a lot harder than even like a regular spray booth can because it doesn't have any any uh, plastic or metal or you know it's just just basically it's all I mean it's just metal there's no plastic or anything like that um, and they can get it really hot um, like they do when they build the cars um, and uh, the baked on finish uh, doesn't always melt as well as something that's re been repainted so since this car has been repainted about a year ago um, it shouldn't be any problem in melting that finish enough to get the clear to to uh, to uh, actually go into it and blend and melt into the old clear so that um, it doesn't uh, make a ring around it. So, uh, and since this, like I said, isn't a show paint job or anything, this is actually a really fine way to repair this. So you're going to have, I'm going I'm to see comments on here that no, this doesn't work. But, you know, if you guys look at those comments, that's fine. Um, yeah, you you kind of know where my theory is on it and uh how i deal with it and uh it's actually gonna work out just fine so i'm gonna go ahead and tape this all off um i'm gonna go ahead and just do a spot repair here um but since i'm gonna have to go ahead and sand it i'm not gonna wash the car yet um but i'm gonna go ahead and uh, push the dent back out and get it straight and then uh and then we'll go from we'll go ahead and put some filler in there prime it, uh, sand it, and then spot paint the area, spot paint the clear, blend it out, and not have to take the whole fender off and make a big deal out of it. All right, so I'll just go ahead and put you guys right here. Uh, hopefully you can see okay. Um, but uh, really the, the object of the game is, is to push up where the low spot is and then hammer around you never really want to hammer on the dolly um, and I'm going to use this start out with this rubber hammer so I don't put too much hammer mark in it you push so I'm pushing right here on the low spot and then I hammer around it and push out at the same time Watch the paintless dent, guys. They call that this area the crown. They say this is a high. It may not even be, but the whole. But it, what it does is it helps make the metal find its own memory to come back. And if you're trying to do like a, I'm looking for one to get a little bit of leverage on this lip right here. This is actually my favorite dolly. I use this the most. 
I think it's called an anvil body. I can't remember. I used to know all the names of them, all that stuff. That's just the one that works. So you hear that, then you know you're going to stretch the metal. So since it has to be painted, I'm not going to spend the time that the painless dent guy would do try and get it perfect. It's 100% by feel here. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put you guys on fast forward here, so you don't need to watch the entire thing. Alright, so you'll see I kind of got this down to being pretty straight. Um, it's actually just a really low right, small low right here where the... Uh, where it was scratched, it's most, so it's mostly just the paint. What I'm going to do is go ahead and just uh, go ahead and sand all this real quick. All right, so this is all going to be done pretty much outside too. It's like a little bit of 120. I'm just going to sand the groove out to make sure that uh, all the peeling paint is kind of removed. Because I'm not going to use like a regular. Uh, plastic filler on here. I'm going to use a polyester filler so that I don't have to do a too large. I don't want to do too large of a uh, spot. I'm trying to keep this down to this really small area. I don't want to have a big giant primer thing. It is going to be a little bit bigger than I want it to be. But I'm just going to go ahead and Sand out the low so that like the so that the uh, filler will stick. That's all I'm looking to do right now. Just want to use some of this uh, Pro Glaze. Hopefully, uh, we got enough in this container. I'm not sure. I have to open it up. Don't need very much of it. Um, may have to get a stir stick and stuff and get it out of there. All right, then. So I just got a stir stick to get. There's not much left in here. I should just throw this away. But probably enough to do this repair. So this guy's kind, of, kind of thin. It doesn't do a lot of deep filling. It doesn't really need to be. But I'm gonna have to put a couple of coats on here. I needed this and it didn't. Supposed to need this up a little bit, but I already did, but it didn't uh, mix it up very good. Let's hope it works okay. We'll know real quick if it doesn't get hard. <laughs> then you have to use my method to get it off, which that just happens, you know. Some people get all freaked out about it. Oh my god, don't do that. Just throw that away, get a new one. It's like, whatever. I don't make a big deal out of anything. Let's get you guys up here. Let you take a look. All right. Right there. All right. Don't have much working time with this. Kind of a thick coat for this stuff. Just a little bit. I mean, still a little bit low right there, but... Just gonna put it on a little bit extra thick so that uh, 
to sand it down. It still sands really fast, so it doesn't really matter. It's really easy sanding stuff. This is that Pro Glaze by USC. It's actually a really good product. And no, I'm not sponsored by any of these people. I just do the stuff that works. So that's what I like to show. All right, I gotta clean this knife. Be right back. All right, so I got myself a stiff sponge block. There's a 3M part number if you want it. They have them on uh, at O'Reilly Auto Parts. It's really cheap. Should have waited a little longer on this. It'll sand a lot easier if I wait with the uh, AG for uh, USC products. They like to wait. They be nice and dry. But I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, go ahead and get this all done. I'm not gonna do uh, DA or anything. I'm just gonna do it by hand because. It'll take a couple minutes. I'm just doing a little bit of 120. So that's what I got laying around. I'd use 80, but I can't find it right now. So it's not that big of a deal. If I was using 80, I'd be already almost done. All right, I'll just go ahead and finish this up and then show you guys the next step, kind of get the idea. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to 220. Should be down to just that one little area. Basically where the paint was chipped off, it's supposed to be the thickness of paint. So a little bit more than primer would fill, so not much. I just didn't want to do two coats, so I put a little heavier amount of uh, polyester glazing on there. Faster and easier. There we go. It's about done. So what I do now is I'm gonna go ahead and, like the Hispanic guys say, make a panocha. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and mask off this area and uh, kind of go ahead and make a little area. I'm gonna flip out the tape um, and then we're gonna just do a little spot prime on here and uh, let that dry, then come back and get it ready to paint. So let's mask it, shall we? Let me show you a little trick. Uh, a lot of guys say that you know you don't want a hard edge and you never really want a hard edge when you mask so if you take your tape and you fold it I don't know if you guys can see that probably not I can't let me get you moved up a little bit more here there we go how's that let's see all right so you go ahead and fold it like this okay so you have like two sides. Funny, I was watching Gunman the other day. And he does this really fast and guys don't even know what he's doing. <laughs> I know what he's doing because I've done it for many years. But um, so you go ahead and do this. And then what that does is there's sticky on one side and then you have this like this. And what that does is keeps it from having a hard edge so like if you do this on a body line, I you know I did a video where I was doing on the Mustang where I did a spot painting blending clear coat and a lot of people have no idea what I did there. And I use the same method that I'm using right here of folding the tape 
And if you do that right on a body line, there's absolutely no presence of any overspray or anything. You can't even see it. So, <laughs> guys are all, oh, that's a hard edge. Look at how nasty edge on it is. They have no clue. Uh, obviously, never done that particular type of uh, work before. So, they didn't, I mean, they probably done, you know, spot repairs or whatever, but never seen somebody do that. So, it's all right. I figured I'd make another video to show people more in depth of how to do those things so that they know it's not just some Mickey Mouse repair. So, so we're going to use some 2-in-1 by Medallion. This works really well. you got to got to shake it up pretty good. Um, and it has a pretty good build to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a light, light coat on there. Put about three coats of this stuff on here. And it's uh, pretty much ready for some fine paper. And then I'll blend out my edges because there won't be much of an edge there. So I got it all bagged up with this. Uh, this is that plastic for painting. It's actually a, for hand masking. They call it hand masking plastic. It's actually good for the overspray for anything so it doesn't stick to it. It's kind of, it works with automotive grade paints even though it's not supposed to. So, it's got it all covered up. I'm going to go ahead and mask this off. We'll let you guys check it out. Alright, so I'll let you guys watch uh, mask it off real quick. I'm going to cover up this finger. I'm not going to do anything too fancy because I'm really not going to get any paint or clear up by the beading. So, I'm mainly just covering it up. Just to keep the overspray from sticking. Looks like I'm not going to even get into the top of the fender at all. The overspray off of here, that's all. Off the other panels. You can get on this, so I'm just going to buff it out. You can actually buff it too when you use this stuff. Again, this is just really rough masking. Could easily remove the headlight. Only takes one screw to take it off, but again, like I said, I'm not just doing this as an example usually because you might have a repair where you're trying to do this and you don't you can't you don't really want to mask off all that stuff, you know, whatever for whatever reason or it's harder to get them off or whatever. Do a rough mask on it. Alright, so I'll go ahead and put that on pause for a second and uh, I'll let you guys check it out after I'm done. Alright, so I'm just going to use a little 800. What I had to grab around, that hopefully it works alright. I just grabbed something. Now it's going to hit this edge. You see where that edge is? There's very, very little paint on there. I need something just a little bit grittier than that. To cut that edge, but I don't really want to sand through it. Yeah, there's not much on there. I 
You can use whatever, you know, whatever grade you want. I use, I mean, I could even use 220 with this, and it'd be fine with the material that I'm using. If you're using a regular base coat, then you got to figure out what you need to know what you need for that. You know, I, I don't know what you're doing. For what I'm doing, I could use 220 or whatever. Give this thing a quick block. It's not perfectly straight, but it doesn't need to be because it's round. Okay, so go to mix up some material. Shoot some. I have a what I'm using is a single stage urethane base with an accelerator, um, and it's you no, know, it's a catalyzed urethane, so not what you guys are normally using. All right, so I'm going to use some number four zero steel wool because that's what I got laying around. A lot of things you can use for a blend panel. A lot of people think it has to be 800 grit or 1200 or something like that. Now I'm just going to put color just over the primed area and try and not get too much on here past that. So I don't want to do the whole fender. This is just to clean it. 4-0 doesn't really do much to the paint. I mean, it kind of does, but not really. Hopefully I don't have any water in my system. Because I'm not painting where I normally paint. This is just like a kind of a little touch-up repair thing. I got this paint catalyzed. I'm going to be using this cheap spray at 3,000 and uh, 33,000 or whatever it is and the reason I'm using this is because this thing puts out almost no overspray so I can almost paint this without even uh, I can turn it way down turn down the material way down so hardly anything's coming out hardly any overspray but that's why I'm using this gun it's not because it's the best gun I've got. Yeah, I've got, I've got way better guns. I got, you know, Techno Pro Light. But this thing here, if you can hear, this one there. Okay, hardly anything's coming out. It's just, a, I'm just going to use it just to mist the material on. So, just barely going to get the base on here. Now, this base is a catalyzed urethane. This is not your normal base coat. It's not stuff that you guys see you know, in automotive paint stores. This is fine material, so it's a little bit different than what you guys are used to use it. Now, the reason I used this when I painted this car is because it was free. If you had free paint, what would you use? Free paint, right? So, that's why I'm using that material. This isn't like a shop trying to show you guys how to you know do it the right way body shop and all that this is homeowner style work uh, if I was doing shop work you know it'd be different I, I'd be in a spray booth I'd be somewhere where it, where it makes it you know customer's car I wouldn't be doing this stuff this is just for you guys for doing your own little job at home You can, you can do it with this spray gun and very, very little overspray. You can almost not even see a cloud. There's nothing in the room. Just going to shoot just enough base on here to cover the area, and that's it. And i got to let this dry for about 30 minutes. It's not because it's catalyzed, and i got to make sure that the catalyst is really set up because what I'm doing is I'm going to be going over this with, uh, with the with the, uh, what's it called, uh, the paint my whole life for my, uh, memory doing a dog, but not using a respirator. It's not like this is like making a whole bunch of overspray either, guys. Anyway, that's kind of work. It's pretty much done. I'm just playing around with it. I can sit here and, and, and do a perfect even pattern and all that. It doesn't really matter. It's just a small spot. This thing is pretty well covered. That's all I want. Covered, that's it. All right. 
So that's that for that stage. I gotta clean this gun right, right away. I'll spare you guys the details of that. Um, I'm gonna go uh, clean this gun out right away because I got catalyzed urethane in here. Single stage. It's a single stage, but I'm gonna use it as a base. So real quick, while we're waiting for that to dry, I wanted to show you guys what I'm gonna use to blend this. Okay, this is Universal Clear Blender. They have, this is by Exalta. This is really expensive stuff. You can get the one from Spray Max. They make the spray can clear coats, Spray Max, and it works the same. And it's about, this was like, I think, 30 something dollars for this spray can. But they have that one for about 12 bucks, I think. The uh, Spray Max one, and it works the same. So, uh, you, you really don't need to spend the money you got for this. Uh, but what this does is I'll spray over the area that I painted with clear okay and then I'll use this stuff to, to what this and, and I'll spray around I'll spray over the area with clear and if you saw that the area that I did was sanded okay around it was just barely with a little bit of steel wool which will make it adhere and then uh, around that is I'm going to clear just that area and then when I spray this on there what this does is it remelts the clear the clear coat and allows it to, to it remelts the clear and actually helps it bond to the existing clear at the same time it gets a, rid of the spray edge so if you but you can't do this if you you know on a, a, a like if you're trying to do an OEM paint on your car or whatever yeah it'll work but you'll get a ring around your clear after a amount of time if it's been repainted with just about anything uh, this will remelt that stuff pretty well I mean it will actually do the remelt the factory clear too but not as much and you might end up with the with the solvent edge you know uh, basically the solvent mapping around your repair so um, in my last video I didn't put that and I got a lot of tons of people telling me that I don't know what I'm doing and all this other stuff and that's cool doesn't matter look at the Mustang pictures when they were done and that just solves everything. If you don't think that paint job looks good, then you just you, you're blind. So, anyway, let's take a look. This is just a this is just a little bitty repair thing. All right, so we'll take a look here at the repair before I put the clear on, just so you can see it's covered. Looks pretty straight. No real issues. Like I said, I'm not looking for a 10 out of 10. I just want to do a little quick repair on this. So you can't hardly even even I can see the spray edge around it. The color is blending in. As it dries, this color changes a little bit. You can't really see the video showing it to be different. I'm looking at the video and I'm looking at the car and they look different. So you can probably see the spray edge around it right now, but in person you barely can at all. But you can feel it. It's a little tiny bit sticky, so I need to wait about a good hour, hour and a half, two hours and let this dry. So I'll come back into this in a little while. All right, so... Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, shoot some clear on here now. It's a little hot out today, I'm talking 100 plus. And uh, just trying to do a little spot job here and not trying to get it too fancy. You guys who are uh, working in shops and stuff, it's obviously not the way you would do it. Let me get my stuff back covered, my car get, get covered back up again. All I got is an old tack rag, so I'll just use it. It's all right. It's a little spot job. We're not looking for perfection. This is basically to show you that don't make excuses. People go, oh, I don't have time to do this right now because they don't have time to do it right. So what you do is you just never do it because uh, you didn't really have time to do it right. That's just an excuse. That's you telling yourself it's okay. Lazy. So I go ahead and I'm going to build this up kind of slow so I can see what's going on. Uh, this is Tamco Clear. They have really the best. I've got a wind issue right now. Like I said, I'm just going to finish this up through it. Wind and everything. So I'm just shooting on some really light coats right now. I'm just kind of watching it. 
seeing what it needs. That's why I'm shooting just kind of weird. Not just shooting the square because I'm doing spots. And I'm shooting this part in the, in the fender real even and then blending out the edges. Doesn't look like I'm doing that, but that's what I can see if I'm looking at the right angle you guys are. This wind is going to cause me get me pissed off in a second here. One thing that gets me irritated, the wind. I'm trying to do something. So then you take this clear blender and on the outside of your repair, so basically in the middle of here, I've got it pretty, pretty smooth, just right. On the outside of the repair, I'm going to shoot just a few coats of this behind the bumper where I can't reach. It's uh, extremely hot out right now, so got the AC blazing in here and uh, let's go ahead and do some polishing on this bug uh, you know when I did this thing I've never really finished polishing I think I went through and just kind of blew through it once and usually you know to do a good polish job you got to spend you know more time than I had at the time <laughs> I think it's probably a couple days really at least I mean I know guys who spent a whole week polishing the car but I mean I wasn't doing it that nice but anyway there's a lot of um, scratch marks in the door and the sides here mostly a few in the fenders you know little places where you can see the sand scratch where I miss stuff so I figured I'd just go ahead and do this today and uh, see if I can get this uh, camera somewhere where you guys can see and I'll just put it on hyperlapse and see what happens shadowy in here but uh, if you can see here where I blend it out um, this is after polish um, there's no transition there's no clear line there's no edge um, because that actually melted in the existing clear and uh, I actually color sanded even into the buff a little bit which you know in the old days you'd have a if, like if you didn't use any kind of um, blending agent then it wouldn't it, you'd have a a line around so a lot of guys are saying oh you can't do that because it'll you know it'll, in a few months it'll have a foggy edge I mean usually you can see that right away if you're um, blending clear coat you know in the old days without using uh, this type of solvent um, and you know, so it, it buffs out really easy. So again, uh, I think I lost part of the video. Um, yeah, the the uh, when you spray the clear, you spray it in the area you're gonna do it, and then when you spray the the blending uh, blending thinner, you spray that around to blend it into the other area, and then what you do is you spray a little light coat of it on and then you uh, spray just your your spray gun with just air and kind of dry it okay and do that like three or four times on each area around it and you know so here and then down here where I was blending um, you do it that way and uh, then do that two or three or four times to help the blending reducer you know work its way into the finish again let it set for the time that it needs to dry just like you normally do um, the next day I buffed it and it looks fine so 
looks good enough. I and mean, we're not looking for a show quality. I mean, if you're going full show or something, like maybe we'd take the whole fender off and clear it. You know, um, that's just a different way to do it. This is a way for some of you guys, you get a scratch or something, the car gets nicked, you know, you don't want to do the whole fender. It's a way you can do it. And it works and it looks good. All right, so uh, remember the base I use, um, it's actually a shadow right here. But sometimes this base uh, settles and you can stir it up all you want and it still won't match exactly 100%. But it does match. It just looks like it doesn't in the, in the video um, because of the lighting. All right, so I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.